Hey guys, welcome to the pickups video for November, a little few days late, but look, that's just how it goes. So in this video, we're gonna look at all the items that uh, we purchased off eBay mostly for our YouTube channel, stuff that companies sent us for review, and also donations that you guys sent to our channel. So we're gonna take a closer look at all of these parts. I will spend a few moments to talk about them. If there's a video review already on that part, I'll put a link uh, on the top right corner. You'll see something pop up there. And also below in the description, you'll find a link to any existing videos that you can check out. I'm also gonna ramble a little bit more than usually. I can use this video as an opportunity to respond uh, to your feedback on some of these videos, which you might find quite interesting. So let's take a look at some sound cards. This one is a donation from Matthew, thank you very much. Comes from New Zealand. My first AWE32 Sound Blaster and the model number is a CT3670. It's got uh, some memory SIM modules up here, which is awesome. And I haven't used this yet, but I'm really looking forward to doing a review on this. Now, uh, just the comments on my sound card videos, they are not doing really well, but I will continue doing them. I'm Firstly, I'm really passionate about DOS gaming and sound cards, and this is really how my channel started. I was uh, kind of sick of tired of all these DOS box uh, gaming videos with wrong aspect ratios and uh, not using real sound cards. And my channel started with just using a cheap uh, S-Video capture card and recording uh, old sound cards and MIDI modules and so on. So. Um, I will continue to review sound cards, even though that um, even though the views are not that great. Um, but it's also uh, a thank you to those who, uh, those of you who have been sticking around since the beginning. So expect uh, to see more sound cards in the near future. We have a few more sound cards to look at. These are supplied by Electromine. I've been working with them for quite a while and I had a look at what sound cards I could recommend to you guys and I asked them if I could have them and here we are. So I've already done the video review on this. So the video is already out there but not uh, unlisted yet. It will go live maybe next week or so. This is a, a retro sound card from Germany, the TerraTech Pro Media Base One. And we have another sound card here. I'm not quite sure what the model is and why I actually picked it. Um, it might have just popped up in one of my uh, searches. Um, I always do extended research on stuff like that. So we have a chip here, it's an analog device, that says AD1846JP. And there's another chipset here from Opti. It's an 82C929A. Uh, so very interesting to find out what this sound card sounds like. I haven't used it before. Um, I do have another card with Opti, but I haven't used that one either. So um, I'm really looking forward to these because uh, these are items I don't have any experience with. Um, it's actually difficult finding uh, parts these days that I haven't used before or that I, I know reasonably well. So this is a, an unknown and I really enjoy uh, installing the drivers and seeing what the mixer settings are like and yeah, listening to the sound cards and finding out those subtle differences between them. And we have another sound card. This one is actually from BTC and there's a little marking here about that company. And I've had good experiences with cards from BTC. They still are online. They still have a website with all the drivers ready for download. And um, yeah, it's got a Mozart chipset. It's the OTI 601. And it also has an analog um, devices chipset. It says AD1848. I can't read the rest. It's underneath the sticker. Um, but yeah, also seems to have Everything just like a standard sound card. Very eager to uh, hear what this sounds like. So yeah, stay tuned uh, for future videos on all of these sound cards. And now we're gonna have a look at some graphics cards. First up is a EVGA, this is a GTX 480. I already have one, you might have seen me use it in a recent video, but now I've got the second one and I'm on the lookout for a third one. So this was uh, quite cheap. Uh, I believe there were three cards going on eBay and I put minimum bids in all of them and I got this one. The other ones went for quite a bit more. So patience is the key. Um, 
I don't want to pay too much, but I have the time usually with my projects. So I usually put in a minimum bid. If I get it, that's good. I'll get a good price, especially because I have to pay uh, postage in Australia. I live remote. But, and if I don't get it, well, too bad. Um, I'll just wait for the next one. So you just have to be a little bit patient and the good deals will come with time. While we're on the topic of powerful video cards like the GTX 480, we also had a look at this power supply. I've already reviewed it. There's a video link up here um, on the video. Just click there and you can get to this video. So this is a Chinese power supply. It was supplied to us by Banggood, rated at 1600 watts. Um, and yeah, I got a ton of interesting comments, let's put it that way, about stuff coming from China, blowing up and all sorts of things. Um, but the, look, the reality is uh, our channel is not large enough yet to attract you know, uh, uh, Western uh, companies uh, that do power supplies and so on. So we, this, is what we have, uh, this, this is what we have to work with. And to be honest, it worked just fine. Um, uh, we did triple SLI with GDX 285s and it powered them just fine. It powered up the GDX 480, the Radeon cards, not a single hitch. So um, it does work. Um, but I do understand your concerns, uh, just for the time being, this is uh, what we have to work with. Now I've got a second GDX 480 and I'm hopefully gonna get a third one. So we will definitely be revisiting um, this power supply, hopefully with GDX 480 uh, triple SLI or SLI or something like that. So we will definitely be back again. And also this is my first power supply that is fully modular, which is nice, makes for some clean, builds to showcase in thumbnails and things like that. So yeah, I'm glad I've got it. Um, despite the uh, high uh, negativity, let's put it that way in the comments, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. And the next video card, this was supplied to us by Gearbest. This is the Radeon R7 240 with a massive four gig of video memory and uh, the video review is already live. I'll put the link uh, up there in the corner. And yeah, the video wasn't too bad received, but also not the, the greatest. Uh, the main concerns that you guys had was to do with the pricing. And yeah, I do get it. Um, if you're building uh, a modern machine, I wouldn't get this card at all. It uh, doesn't have enough uh, performance and there are better options out there like a GD 1030 or a Radeon 550 or something like that. But the reason why I asked to get this particular model is because it's compatible with Windows XP. So that was the whole point of this video and um, not everyone wants to buy secondhand. Some people do want to buy something brand new and for Windows XP gaming it was actually quite decent. It only struggled with some of the uh, later games like Crisis of Fear but uh, a lot of other games will run just fine on this card. It's nice and quiet, low power and gets the job done. We had a few driver issues so um, but I do uh, show that in the video and also a workaround. So yeah, not a bad card. Um, the pricing is just something you have to make up your mind uh, yourself. It's not a bargain, that's for sure. But look, it is brand new and um, yeah, a lot of people do like uh, buying brand new stuff rather than going secondhand. So yeah, uh, we had a look at it and we've got the benchmark results. The test system is brand new, so I couldn't do any comparisons just yet, but we have these results now. So in future Windows XP uh, video card reviews, we can compare the results of this card with whatever we're gonna look at uh, soon. And we've got two more video cards to look at. These are supplied to us by Electromine. Once again, I picked up two video cards that I thought you guys might find interesting. This one is the Radeon 9000 Pro. So slightly higher clocked um, compared to the Radeon 9000. I've already got a video ready for the Radeon 9000. It's not live yet, so keep an eye out on the channel. And the 9000 Pro is higher clocked on the core and on the memory. And I believe this is a version from Sapphire. Yes, there you go, it's a version from Sapphire. DDR memory, it's got all the outputs, DVI, VGA, but also TV in and out. So uh, this should be a very nice retro card for Windows 98 maybe. It is Dark A, uh, DirectX 8 or 8.1. So if you're looking for something that's got decent performance and you don't need DirectX 9 or whatever, then this card might be of interest to you. And this is the second graphics card from Electromine. This is a classic, the GeForce 4 Ti 4200. And this one is from Medion. Could be found in a lot of German Aldi computers and probably in the UK as well. 
um, an OEM version. I'm not sure who's behind it. Usually it's MSI, but uh, there's no real giveaway as to who made this card. I don't know, MS, it's probably an MSI. Um, not quite sure how much RAM, 128, I think, but it might be a 64 meg version, which would actually be more interesting because all the GeForce 4 cards, uh, TI cards I have, have 128 meg of RAM. And it has dual VGA, so no DVI on this graphics card, and also TV in, TV out, the usual connectors. So um, also very suitable for Windows 98 gaming. You can of course also use it under Windows XP, but performance will quickly uh, become not enough for the later games, but for early Windows XP games, this is a great card, but I see it more uh, suitable for Windows 98 uh, because you can basically max out uh, any game. And next up, we're gonna have a look at a few things I bought off eBay. The first item is this Express card cable. Well, it goes to HDMI, but that's not how it works. This is actually for the external graphics card dock that I reviewed a while ago. Um, I'll put the link up here. So uh, yeah, basically the uh, product I reviewed a while ago uh, involved removing the Wi-Fi card and then uh, connecting an adapter to an external video card to boost the performance. And that worked really well. We got a, a 4X or 5X performance boost or something like that. Um, and this one is basically for the same device. It's just the cable, but with Express Card. Now, all I need to do now is find an old laptop with an Express Card slot um, that is hopefully compatible with external video cards. Haven't found one yet, so um, I'll keep looking. Ideally, one with a smashed or banged up screen, because uh, that should be uh, going for a lot less than one that works. So yeah, I'm on the lookout. I've got the adapter, so hopefully at some point in the future, we can check out the performance of the Express Card external uh, graphics adapter compared to using the Wi-Fi module. Not the Wi-Fi module, but the mini PCI Express slot that's under uh, on the bottom of the laptop, and that's usually populated with a, a Wi-Fi card. Next up, we got some cheap RAM coolers. I think they cost like a dollar each, uh, and basically, yeah, you just put them onto your RAM sticks and. I didn't really get these for cooling, it's just I have a few uh, RAM modules where the original coolers got ripped off, so uh, there's a bit of residue left and they just don't look very nice. So that is a cheap way of making your old memory sticks just look a little bit nicer and more modern. And we've got this contraption. This is a very nifty uh, front panel device. I uh, work with open test benches, you've seen it in most of my videos. And what this does is basically you connect this to your motherboard, to the front panel headers. So there's one for reset, for power, for the power LED, and also for the hard drive LED. And the cord is actually quite long. And it comes even with a rear bracket, so you can um, route this uh, out the back of your computer case. And the way this works, power button, it's got that, that's the reset switch. It um, lights up blue for power and the hard drive activity is red and blue and red combines to a kind of a, like an orangey color and yeah very handy and um, yeah just looks a little bit nicer than some of the other front panel buttons and, and LEDs that I've used in the past. Didn't cost much I'm not sure how much um, leave a comment down below if you want me to look it up but uh, all these little gadgets that come from China they're very cheap. And I bought a few budget coolers also from eBay. Now, there are a lot of reviews out there for tower coolers and well done, even some of the cheaper models. But I love, I'm a sucker for these uh, blower type uh, coolers that blow the air down and cool the via rams. I just like that. Maybe I'm really old school in that regard. Um, I don't want to use a tower cooler if I really can avoid it. So I haven't found too many decent reviews on these coolers. Um, so yeah, why not just do it yourself? And that's really <laughs> my approach to a lot of my videos. So we have two coolers from Arctic. We've got the Alpine 11 and the Alpine 11 Plus. That one uses the traditional uh, push pins, whereas this one comes with, some, with a frame uh, that you bolt, uh, not bolt, but attach to the motherboard first and then you screw this onto the frame. I've already reviewed this. The video also is not live. It's in the queue, so to speak, um, in case something pops up or I get sick or whatever. I've got a few videos uh, ready to go. 
and that will yeah i don't know when but it will come live uh, eventually and this one is from deepcool it's the alter 7 also has the push pins just like this one and there are some subtle differences between them and uh, these are usually little things you don't pick up when you look at these specifications those are things that you only realize when you bought the unit and you install it or things like that so that's basically the idea of what i'm trying to do and there will be a lot more cpu coolers um, coming shortly kind of <laughs> i don't regret buying them but um, shortly after i bought them uh, i got a few comments about motherboards bending when i installed the coolers and i looked into that and not so much when i installed the coolers um, well when you install it and you push the cooler down of course the motherboard bends but i noticed that when i re removed the motherboard from my test bench that it had a uh, yeah that it was basically uh bending and um so i'm looking at cheap coolers similar to this but with back plates and they haven't arrived yet i'm getting a few from ebay a few from aliexpress so i'm looking forward to those and very likely i'll switch over to using similar type coolers to this but using back plates so stay tuned for videos on basically a ton of cpu coolers hopefully you find it interesting um, uh, it's not really 100% what we're doing on our channel all the time so i'll probably squeeze them in <laughs> between two relevant videos but I do feel uh, quite interested in this, in this topic. And uh, in the end of the day, there's no point of just making videos uh, to chase views or whatever. Uh, in the end of the day, these are, these are the things that interest me and hopefully you also find them interesting. And next up, we've got a couple more items that are requested from Banggood. Well, you guys really did not like the RGB stuff. I, I, kinda, I kinda knew that um, that video wouldn't do too well. But when we did the sleeper PC, a couple of you uh, asked for RGB, so I thought, hey, <laughs> why not give it a go? And the reason I went with these fans is basically value. Um, I think all up uh, cost around $60, and you're getting six fans with a, a fan controller, which goes on the back of the motherboard tray, tray including a remote control, and uh, it does over 300 different animations. And I actually had really, I had fun doing this video. Um, yeah, it has something to be said about RGB, but look, I totally understand uh, now, um, looking at the views and the feedback, that uh, RGB lighting is not your thing, guys. So I'll keep that in mind. Um, I'm just going to warn you, there will be not something with RGB, but I will be reviewing a mechanical keyboard soon. Um, the angle I'm doing is, is that mechanical keyboard, is that going to, um, uh, how to put it, is that going to bring back the nostalgic memories uh, of my childhood, basically? Because uh, we had a mechanical keyboard uh, at school and at home, and uh, it was that typical IBM clicky keyboard. Um, so that's what the theme uh, is uh, is about. But that keyboard also has RGB lighting. You can turn it off, of course, but I will definitely have to talk about that feature so but yes i got the point with the rgb i'm not gonna get any more rgb fans and if i do i'm just gonna uh, get them for myself and not do a, a video about it we got this interesting gadget from sedako from belgium he sent us this to our youtube channel this is a sound card with the yamaha opel 2 chip Basically, it's an Adlib sound card for the parallel port. So very interesting for people that have a laptop, for example, or an older machine that does not have ISA slots, um, but has a parallel port and is not compatible with PCI sound cards either. So this will give you uh, that authentic Yamaha FM sound. It's not a sound blaster, so it doesn't do digital speech or sound effects. It's FM only, but I'll, uh, a ton of these old games work just fine with just uh, Adlib. And this is available as a solder kit. I believe you're looking at uh, 30 euros for the solder kit and 40 assembled or something like that. Don't quote me. I've done a video on that. I'll put it uh, up here. You can check it out. Also, um, all the videos that I mentioned uh, throughout the video, I'll put a list down below in the description as well. So you have it a little bit easier. But um, how cool is that? And I did a video on using this on a Core i7 playing DOS games. Uh, basically, just to have a goofy video and um, to show you what's possible. It's, it's unlikely that anyone is going to rush out and buy this to run it on an i7. Uh, it's a bit silly, but I just wanted to show that it's possible. And you can uh, use this with uh, older laptops and older computers that have a printer port just fine. 
more stuff from Banggood. This is a digital thermometer with a laser pointer. Um, that's how you just press and gives you the temperature reading. Uh, it's in Fahrenheit now, let me just change it back. So around 29 degrees in this room. And we use this to check out the temperatures on Voodoo 2 and Voodoo 3 cards and um, talk about cooling methods and so on. So it turned out, turned out that this is quite reliable, but it does depend on what surface you're using it on. Anything that's shiny or reflective, like the aluminium cooler on the uh, Voodoo 3, is not going to give you a reliable reading. And some suggestions were that you put on some sticky tape or paint it black or something like that. Um, yeah, that's not going to do it for me. So I'm aware of the shortcomings now with this product and when you can use it and when it's not going to give you uh, reliable readings. It's only $10, so it's not a big loss. Um, and it's something nice to have in your arsenal just in case. So because the infrared thermometer didn't work out that great, a lot of you recommended to get something like this. So I hopped on eBay and this actually comes from an eBay seller in Western Australia, which is uh, rare. Usually I have to get everything from the East Coast, Sydney or Melbourne or areas like this. So it arrived within a few days. And I'm also getting another one. This one has two channels. So these are the uh, temperature probes and you plug them in somewhere here, I guess. Yeah, right here. So we have two inputs here for our uh, thermal probes and yeah, I don't know if it comes with batteries or if they're flat or whatever, I'll figure it out. Um, and yep, you get your two temperature readings. Now I do have a question for you guys. Uh, let me just open this. And the back question is basically how to attach the thermal uh, sensor. So that's uh, on the other end, little sensor. How do you attach that to your video card, for example? Um, Blue tech or whatever, what do you guys recommend? Let me know. I would uh, find that very helpful. But yes, so this is something we can expect in future videos. Uh, see, So you can see me using this. Um, I might revisit the Voodoo 3 once again, just to double check that the temperatures were actually accurate. Um, and yeah, for future videos, I'm probably going to use this rather than the infrared uh, thermometer. And we also checked out this contraption. Once again, there's a video link up the top here where we reviewed this product. This is basically a graphics card cooler and it goes into one of the, your slots, like a PCI slot in the back of the case, and it cools your video card. And that worked really well. We had a look at uh, the Voodoo 2 card, which doesn't have any cooling. It doesn't have any uh, heat sinks, no fans, so it does run a little bit hot and this knocked off around 10, 20 degrees uh, of the temperature. So it works very well. And in terms of pricing, $11, so it doesn't cost a fortune. And the fans are LED, but you can rip out the lights if you don't like that. And you can also get some thinner fans. Uh, you will lose a, a slot nearby, but if you're getting like a 15 mil thickness fan, which are available also on on the Banggood website, then uh, you might be able to squeeze in a little bit more. Or at least it's not going to be as bulky as this. But uh, it worked great, 11 bucks, can't go wrong. If you've got a Voodoo 2 and you want to look after it, why not get one of these? And the last item for today is this motherboard, also supplied to us by Banggood. This is once again a mining product. It's a socket uh, 1150 motherboard but we didn't look at any uh, video card mining stuff. It's not what I'm into. It's not what this channel is about. So we had a look at this motherboard in terms of uh, using it for gaming or maybe everyday use. And the bottom line is it worked fine. I had zero stability issues. It actually had a really good bias in terms of options, all sorts of options. Some of them I've actually never seen. It's got a little VM cooler, which is nice. No overclocking or whatsoever, unfortunately. Um, so we used the Pentium Anniversary. Uh, edition and the chipset is a B85 chipset and there was just no overclocking happening. But in terms of stability and features and everything, it yeah, it's a, it's a great motherboard. Uh, you're looking at around $100, so you have to look around if it's worth it. Uh, but look, it is new. Uh, of course, buy from China, there's always a bit of risk with, involved with the warranty. But the video did quite well, so I'll keep that in mind for future videos. You made a few comments about uh, X, X58 and LGA 2011, I believe, boards. Um, unfortunately, Banggood, they don't have any of those boards. So uh, at the moment, their range is very limited with the video cards, uh, with the motherboards. 
but they do have uh, video cards and they're trying to get more video cards in and grow that area and hopefully uh, we can help uh, i definitely gonna ask for more video cards so hopefully that's something we can do um, working with banggood so there you have it guys these are all the items we got in november now uh, some of these items i might not get around to checking them out for quite a while but eventually there will be a video if there's anything uh, you've got questions about or any comments or if there's anything that you really want to see like super urgently let me know and if anything that hasn't been reviewed yet and you want me to look into something uh, specifically uh, tell me now it's a lot easier usually when i'm finished with a video i pack everything away and i don't have an opportunity to test something uh, again and that's really it for this video guys thank you so much for watching and yeah I shall see you soon with another one.